Analog sound systems might seem ancient to some of us, while others of you learned on these systems and have a lot more experience and comfort on them. When I was 13 doing tech at church, I realized that it wasn't enough for me to know that, well, this fader, in this case, this knob, makes the microphone louder. I needed to know why. Not like how does the mic convert sound waves into electrical, but how the mic plugs into the snake, then goes back to front of house, gets mixed in the board, and then is amplified by the amps to into the speakers. In the next video in this series, I'm going to explain how a digital sound system compares to analog, but first we need to have a good understanding of the analog world. So let's go back to the basics where me, and I'm guessing a lot of you started. Hi everyone, my name is Nathan from Crazy Amazing Designs and I help teams and individuals do church and event production with excellence. So thank you for joining me to learn more about sound systems. Consider subscribing and joining me as I help people be excellent in the areas of production. There are a lot of vocabulary terms that will come up during this video. I'm gonna share a full list of sound terms with definitions that I use here in a pinned comment. Leave a comment of your own and let me know what this video has helped you understand or maybe there is something you'd like to learn even better. Every sound system looks different, but there are a lot of similarities that we can focus on. An analog mixer at front of house might be connected to an eight, 16, or 32 channel snake that brings all of the channels to front of house from the stage. A sound snake is a group of copper wires that are each marked with a unique number wrapped together in a semi-flexible rubber sheath. If you look at any channel count snake at front of house, as soon as the rubber sheath ends, the wires become a hot mess. You usually have a pile of XLR or quarter inch connectors. For the snake that runs from front of house to the stage, it's usually going to have a box on the stage end. There are two other options. You could have a group of free hanging cables and connectors, or the wires from the snake could be soldered directly to wall and floor input jacks. I think it's most common to have the snake box run into a room or closet off stage where all of the stage inputs are connected to the snake box. So let's assume that you have a box or group of free hanging connectors on stage. We need to get the signals from all over the stage to the snake stage box. We can do this in one of two ways. Number one, run smaller snakes running to the various locations on the stage where inputs need connected. This is typically done using smaller snakes with free hanging connectors on both ends. Many churches and venues have floor and wall plates located around the stage where inputs can be connected. These ports are numbered and then hidden wires are run from these ports to the main stage box. A sound snake is sold based off of channel count, number of connectors on each end, and its length. So now that we have a good understanding of how stage snakes work, we can plug each channel from the snake into the mixer. So here I have a small four channel snake and I'm just gonna go ahead and plug each channel, number channel number one and channel number one, three and four. Okay, so channel one on the snake plugs into channel one on the mixer. The input ports will be on the top or on the back of the mixer. On the board, each channel is also likely to have a quarter inch line in, which is a line level input for keyboards, drum machines, and other devices. The insert is to connect an effects processor. The TRS or tip ring sleeve quarter inch jack can both send and receive the signal back into the mixer. If you wanna send signals to a second mixer for a broadcast mix or in your monitors mix, a simple way is to connect quarter inch cables into the mixer's inserts. This output would basically be an unfiltered version of what is coming into the input. Connect these cables to the inputs of a sound mixer and you're done. Now that we know how the signal gets into the mixer, we can work our way down the channel strip and see settings for just this channel. So the channel one strip runs from the top to the bottom where the fader is located. On this mixer on the top, we have our XLR, we have our line input and we have our gain. Then we have three knobs of EQ. Then we have one aux mix or effects. And then we have our pan left and pan right. So we can do two stereo. And then we have our main volume level. So here I am on this Soundcraft GB4. Now this is an analog console, as you can see. And if we just go over here to the very first channel strip, 
Our input is coming in through an XLR on the back of the channel. And then our first thing is our phantom power button, 48 volts. The next thing on the channel strip is our phase. We can invert it basically. And then we've got our microphone gain. So we're gonna be able to gain it up and down. We've got a button here to adjust that. Now we've got our high, our high mid, our low mid, and our low frequency. So this is our EQ settings that we have available on this mixer. And then down here below that, we've got two, four, six, eight aux mixes. So this is gonna allow us to put these, this channel in specific monitor mixes, et cetera, et cetera. And if we go over here, we can see our green, blue, white, and black monitor mixes. Now these are gonna be our main output volume levels for our mixes that are right here. So this is just putting this channel in these monitor mixes. So if you've got a stereo instrument, you've got your left and right, and you're gonna pan the one channel left and one channel right. We've got our mutes for these two channels, or this one channel we're looking at. These buttons are gonna be used for creating our groups. And then down on the bottom, we've got our mute groups. So if you look over here on the right side, you can see our mute groups, one, two, three, and four. And then down here, we've got our channel assignment groups. We can group like the drums together, the vocals together, the guitars together and that gives us a nice uh, control over our channels. And then we come back to the channel we're working on. We just got our volume up and down. So now when I tell you that an analog mixer is simple, I hope you'll be more likely to believe me. An eight channel mixer simply has seven more of the channel strips that we just talked about. A 16, 32, or 64 channel mixer might look huge, but it's just 63 more of that one channel that we just looked at. Every setting for each channel is located in the channel strip for that specific input. So actually, it's really simple. You just need to have good labeling so that you don't get lost knowing that channel 18 is your bass and channel one is your kick drum. If you want to change how the kick sounds, then adjust the high, mid, or low EQ settings on channel number one or turn the volume up or down in your mix. So now that we know how the analog mixer works, let's take a look at some other features of an analog mixer. Plus 48 volts, also called phantom power, is used to provide power to certain microphones through the XLR connection to the mixer. Yes, they travel through the snake. With analog mixers, the ability to turn on and off phantom power is usually all on or all off on the mixer. There was a time in my life that I didn't realize this and I blew out the output ports on my very first audio interface because I didn't realize I couldn't plug it straight into the sound system. I actually have a video on my channel where I tore that apart because the company asked me to and since then they've upgraded the quality of their output so now they won't blow if phantom power gets connected to them. When that happened, we had Phantom Power active for our pastor's teaching mic. And what I learned from that is be sure to use DI boxes because they shield your instruments from the 48 volt Phantom Power. Mixers also have the ability to group channels together. On each mixer, there is a set of buttons to add each channel to one or more of several available groups. For example, this allows us to send all of the drum channels to a group where we then have volume control over all of the drums in the main mix with a single fader. Usually on the right side of the board somewhere, there is a master volume for each of the one, two, or four aux mixes that the board has available. These aux or mix bus are additional mixes the board can output for stage monitors for the band. This one actually calls it FX for effects because it's apparently designed to be used for effects, not labeled as aux mix, but it works the same. You can send a little bit of each channel to the output and then you have a master volume fader. Then on the back of the mixer or the top of the mixer in this case, we have quarter inch or XLR connectors to output the aux sends. On the right side of the board, the one that actually has a fader on this one, this is where you can set the main volume level of the mixer. Then on the top or back of the mixer, there are XLR or quarter inch outputs to send the main mix to the amps or speakers. The output of the mixer's main left right is then usually sent back through the snake to the speakers. Sound snakes are designed to send the majority of channels from the stage to the front of house, but then there are also a few channels with the connectors set to take signals from the mixer to the stage to easily connect speakers and stage monitors. There are two types of speakers, active and passive. If you just plug the output of your mixer into a speaker, it's most likely going to be super quiet. Without amplification, you can't expect to get much volume. Most analog mixers like this one are passive, which means the output is not powered. 
So let's look at active speakers that require external power from a cord to make them work and then get an XLR connection for signal. Then passive speakers get the power to operate and signal from the quarter inch cable from the amplifiers. So we need to plug our mixer's output into the snake to take it to the stage where it gets plugged into the amps. Then the output of the amplifier goes to the speakers or the snake output from the mixer connects directly to the speakers and external power also connects to the speakers. Either way, the speakers now have signal that can be amplified. Well, that was fun. In the next video, we're gonna compare an older analog sound system with the newer digital systems. Thank you for joining me on this journey of helping teams and individuals do church and event production with excellence. Consider subscribing to the channel and following along. Thank you and I'll see you next time, bye.